Hi everyone, I'm Josh and welcome to Josh Wright Piano TV. Today's episode is dedicated to one of our audience members, Shin, who asked, how do I choose and purchase uh, the right piano for me? And second of all, how do I maintain my current piano? Um, these are great questions. I went really into depth in the VIP Masterclass series video on this topic. Um, you can check that out if you're interested in going a little more in depth, but I did want to give um, some suggestions here on the YouTube channel as well, because I get this question all the time from a lot of our viewers. Uh, the very first thing that I want to discuss is the sound of your instrument. Um, that might be like the most obvious thing to you, like, of course, I got to like the sound of my piano, but so many people are swayed by a, a name, like a brand of piano, or they're swayed by the opinion of a pianist they respect. And you are the one who's going to be spending thousands of hours at this instrument. So make sure that you like the sound of the piano. Um, my wife and I purchased uh, our first piano in 2010. And the reason we bought that, I remember we were just playing, I think she was maybe playing a Liszt Consolation, and I just played this simple Chopin Nocturne. <laughs> And I just loved um, the way the piano spoke up top. It was just such a pure bell-like sound. Um, we saved a lot for this piano. We bought this piano last year. And um, it was kind of the opposite in this piano. The bass just really took me out. You can um, check out a really the video I posted just before this one is, um, well, a couple of videos actually. The um, Tchaikovsky uh, Lullaby in a Storm arranged by Arkady Volodos, like the um, really big climax. <laughs> It's one of the best basses I've ever played on any piano. That was kind of the selling point. Um, and it's always the joke between my technician and I that we've kind of slaved 99% of the time over this, and we've barely even touched this. We haven't done almost anything to this. I'm like, don't don't touch that. It's perfect. Let's just work a lot on this. And there is there are things that you can do. Um, like this, he put a new set of hammers on before um, he sold us this piano. Uh, it, w it wasn't really speaking in this treble register. There's ways that he treated the hammers that they're not shrill, but they are really speaking nicely. So if you have a really strong selling point with the piano, <laughs> then maybe that's why you go with that. It should always have to do with the sound though, the way the piano sounds. Now, if you have a terrible action and you like the sound, well, maybe you're gonna consider looking elsewhere if the action's really, really horrible. Um, but again, you can adjust your piano. Like you can soften up a hammer uh, to be a little less shrill if it gets shrill, or you can, um, you can treat it to make it a little brighter. Um, and there's things you can do with the action as well, but really sound is number one in my book. And I feel like so many pianists hear, but they don't really listen um, carefully enough. I've even seen it in professional recordings um, where I'm like, is the pianist listening to what they're doing right now? Because this is pretty boring the way they're shaping this or their sound is a little metallic here. What? And I think it just comes from the teachers that I've had and a personal obsession with Murray Pariah, um, who has just such a golden sound. And later on in life, I discovered Sergei Babayan, who I was lucky enough to do um, some lessons with, and Daniel Trifonov, and they have such beautiful sound quality and tone quality as well. So um, I think that that should be the number one thing that you look at. Uh, it is a good idea to um, hire a pianist to test drive the piano for you make sure that things sound good and uh, get the technician, hopefully the technician that services your other piano or if this is your first piano, the technician that you'd like to have work on your new piano, um, have him come take a look, make sure everything's in order. Um, but no matter what anyone says, you gotta like the sound of your piano. Number two, I would check out the action of the piano. You can check out how 
quickly it responds. So um, is it going to play a scale without being sluggish? Is the action deep enough for you? Um, like, does it feel like you actually have control? I've played some pianos with such shallow actions. Luckily, I had trained on a deeper piano action that I could, like, get by with it. And I actually played, like, the fastest I've ever played <laughs> in my life. I still remember. It was a Beckstein piano. Extremely shallow action. And I zoomed through those Chopin etudes like I never had before. But if I had trained on that piano, I would actually be at a huge disadvantage because... Um, not because it's a Beckstein. Becksteins are wonderful instruments. Um, but because that piano in particular had such a shallow action that any other piano, you're going to get tired probably pretty quickly. So um, again, you can adjust key dip or hammer throw on a piano, like the, the length of a hammer throw or how, how far down the key goes. And you'd be so surprised at little adjustments, how much difference they make. Um, but again, uh, you want something that has a, a good action, a good feel. You can test out, like with a piece like the the Scarlatti, the uh, Sonata in D minor, testing out the the repetition. That's always something I like to take a look at as well. So the action is really important. Um, so the sound and the action, get a pianist to help you and um, have your technician come take a look at it. I know that's really glossing over. There's a lot more that you could do and hopefully the piano store or individual you're purchasing it from um, can kind of give you a, a rundown of it. If you're purchasing it from private party um, sellers, I would definitely take a technician with you to look things over because even as a concert pianist, I don't always know what I'm looking for in a piano. I've been learning a lot more about how the piano works and all the names of everything within the action and how um, a piano is made. Um, that's just been a, a fascination of mine, but how, I, I still would take a trusted technician because they do this every single day, all day. Um, so uh, that would be my advice for choosing and purchasing a piano. This, the other thing is to always, um, you know, keep your budget in, in consideration. Don't overextend yourself so much for a piano. We saved a lot of time for this piano. This was not just a whim of a purchase um, for us. So, um, and if you just have to start with a really good quality keyboard, like or digital piano, that's fine too. And then you upgrade as you go, as you're able to. Um, if someone's snobby enough to say, no, you will never train on anything but a grand piano, um, but you're in a financial situation that just simply doesn't allow you to do that, then maybe look elsewhere for your instruction because um, I've worked with people that have been on digital pianos before and they upgraded and they were so happy that they had stuck with music. That's the biggest thing. We're all playing music here and we want to keep that at the forefront. Uh, we don't want to, you know, get too turned off by if our instrument is a little better than someone else's. It's just we do what we can um, and, I mean, some of the greatest pianists I know um, like Sergei Babayan, for instance, told me about playing on horrible pianos in the USSR. Um, and he said, I was amazed at the quality of instruments that I experienced when I came to the United States because we were playing on old broken down pianos when we were playing half of our concerts and we had to learn to control those and make those beautiful. So I thought that was a pretty um, touching story. Sometimes we don't know how lucky we are. And if you are in a situation where you don't have a good quality instrument, just start looking for ways to um, be creative and innovative and um, hopefully change that. Uh, of course, I don't have all the answers on that uh, point. The second question, how to maintain your piano. Um, I like to get, well, I'm a little bit of a, an exception because I'm recording on this piano all the time. And so I have my technician come here a lot more than a normal person would. Um, but on a normal schedule, usually two times a year uh, is fine, or one time a year if, if it's more of a light use piano, um, that's that's completely fine. Um, every if it's being played a lot, uh, like I remember we purchased a piano growing up. My parents did. It was a really nice piano, and I banged away on that thing so much, and so did my siblings. Um, probably three to four hours a day from me and then you know half hour from my brother who hated the piano and then maybe another hour and a half from my brother who loved the piano <laughs> um i have two brothers and uh and um my sister was so young i i didn't uh experience too much of um 
her practicing. We didn't have too much overlap because I was pretty much out of the house by the time she started to really get into piano seriously. But um, we banged away on that thing so much that we had to replace the hammers after five or six years um, because it was getting such heavy use. Even after our technician had like re-needled the hammers as, you know, re-sanded them, reshaped them so many times, he's like, enough's enough. Like I can't really sand off anymore and still have these sound good. So we replaced those and it was like the piano itself wasn't very old. So that one thing, and I think he may have replaced um, some things in the, like little things in the action, like the little pieces of felt underneath the um, keys. And that like made it like a new piano again. It's amazing what a new set of hammers can do for a piano. Um, ask your technician if there's anything serious. I wouldn't ever buy a piano um, that had like big soundboard issues. That's just running into a big heavy amount of problems. If there's serious uh, issues with the action, you probably don't want to go down that rabbit hole and take a risk, even if it's a really good deal on the piano. Make sure to have your technician advise you. If you live in a really humid environment, um, where I live is a desert, um, so it's very dry here. But if you live in a really hu humid environment, you can get something called a damp chaser. Um, again, I don't know too much about them because I don't have one, but that basically humidifies the area around your piano and keeps it at an optimum humidity uh, level to make sure that your instrument is not warping. I one time, this was so sad. They uh, the school I attended um, had a choir room and they had a Boston piano that they just bought for the school. Really nice grand piano. Um, and someone left the door open quite frequently because they're like, we got to get air in the room. Our singers are getting hot. Um, but then they would let it get so cold and then they would let it get really hot and it like warped the soundboard to where it actually like ruined the piano so you want to be careful with temperature and humidity regulation with your piano that would be my big takeaway um, with maintaining your piano is regularly get it serviced at least once a year if not twice a year if you're a normal human being if you're like me and <laughs> this is what you do all day every day maybe it increases to three four five six times a year um, even and by the way every single one of those times doesn't have to be like a complete overhaul it might just be touching up some voicing another thing I did is I asked my technician if stuff got really bad if he could teach me so I bought this this is so expensive um, but he's like you want to get a good one he's like it's almost impossible to tune with a bad um, tuning hammer this is a Fujan F-U-J-A-N and um, then just a couple this was like 300 bucks such a rip off but really good quality one. Um, and then these little mutes, um, these are like a few dollars on Amazon. And um, then I also, I don't think it's in the piano, but I also got a, a voicing needle. Those two things, he just kind of taught me like, okay, if a, if a note's getting extremely shrill and I can't come out, here's how you needle it properly without breaking anything inside the piano or over needling it and getting it so soft. Um, and then here's how you tune up, uh, touch up a unison. I am not going through my piano and trying to tune the whole thing, but if a, uh, a key gets really out of tune, um, I can figure out what string it is and I can touch that up back to um, pretty perfect, to be honest. It's taken me a while to get um, <laughs> better at that. And I'm not saying I'm a piano technician at all. I just am okay at tuning a unison. <laughs> um, but that has been one of the best investments I've ever bought because I remember I was, I think it was the To a Wild Rose tutorial. The A like went out right in the middle of that tutorial and it was so annoying. So I stopped the camera, tuned it up and then it sounded fine for the rest of the tutorial. So um, that's been a, a big help at maintaining my piano as well, just little touch-ups along the way. So I hope this gives you a short guide to help you um, in your quest to purchase a new piano if you're in the market for one or to maintain your current piano. And on that note, if you are serious about buying a used Steinway, um, feel free to contact me and I can put you in touch with the piano technician that sold me this. Um, he does absolutely amazing work, Steinway trained um, technician. So that's kind of his specialty. 
Um, but I didn't want to put his information out publicly to YouTube. Um, I want to keep that private just to respect his privacy. But he said that on a one-on-one -on -one basis, I could refer that out. So if you do want that information, feel free to send me an email and I'll pass that along. If any of you have any other questions you'd like me to address in future videos, please let me know. My email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you don't mind subscribing, liking this video, hit that bell button. I never ask for that on my videos. People are like, you need to start doing that. <laughs> I'd truly appreciate if you would subscribe. It helps, I guess, with the search engine results. I'm not really sure, but it's great to connect with so many of you. I'll also leave a few links in the description below. Um, two links for my uh, paid courses if you wanna go even deeper than this channel goes. Um, a link for a free webinar containing 10 of my favorite practice tips. And then the final one is a link for all the gear that I use to record these videos in case you're wanting to do some at-home recording, especially during the pandemic, which has really limited um, public appearances. So if you're wanting to do some recording for YouTube or Facebook, um, I have a lot of high quality gear in there as well. Uh, suggestions if you wanna take that to a new level also. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions. Thank you.